Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for this morning comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, beginning in verse 15. But regard the Lord, the Christ, as holy in your hearts. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that is in you. But speak with gentleness and respect, while maintaining a clear conscience, so that those who attack your good way of life in Christ may be put to shame because they slandered you as evildoers. Indeed, it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Because Christ also suffered once for sins in our place, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in flesh, but was made alive in spirit, in which he also went and made an announcement to the spirits in prison. These spirits disobeyed long ago, when God's patience was waiting in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In this ark, a few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. And corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the guarantee of a good conscience before God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He went to heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of our Lord. Last week in our gospel, we heard Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He who comes to the Father must come through me. That's a very powerful and beautiful message for those who know Jesus, who trust Him, who love Him for the wonderful sacrifice and and death, and life that he not only experienced when he rose from the dead after paying for the sins of the world, but the life that he promises to you and me, not just a life here, but a life forever with God. But that message is very exclusive. Jesus says, I am the way, not a way. I am the truth, not a truth. I am the life. I am the only one who can give you true life here and life everlasting. There's absolutely no one else who can truly make you happy, content, unafraid, guilt-free, forgiven, and eternal but me. And we talked last week how that's hard because that message is not very appreciated by our culture, and our world today. And we're told that if you come to someone and say, all right, this is what I believe, or this is what I think, and the other person will respond with, why is your opinion and your thoughts any more true than anyone else's? And you have to give it, it is a good point. Because what is my opinion over another human being's? What are my thoughts over the ways of another person in this world? Why do I think that I know better than anyone else? But it's not your opinion. They're not your thoughts. It's not your way. It's Jesus who is the way, the truth. In the life. But there's no doubt that in today's environment, it is not easy to talk about your faith. It's not easy to present Christianity and Jesus as someone that does it instantly when you mention his name or you mention Christianity, you mention that you go to church, that people don't react in anger and frustration before you even share a single word. Right? And you know what's kind of happened for us? 
And this can be a good thing when we're under attack. That when we're being attacked for our faith and for witnessing to Jesus and talking about everything that he has done and what the Bible says and why it says it and why other people might be wrong in their thinking, is that we've gotten very, very scared to talk about who we are, to talk about our Savior, to talk about what He has done, and we've retreated into our bubble. We've buried the hope deep in our heart, and we're hiding. Now that's good for us to hold tight the hope that we have in Jesus, to cling to it, and when we're being attacked from all sides, to not just throw it away, but to cling to Jesus and His cross with everything that we have, because we know He is from another world. Even if this world does not know Him or love Him, because Jesus said we would be hated for our faith. So it is very good that we don't abandon, but we cling to that hope. But what Peter, inspired by God, tells us today, is that we can't just retreat. And we can't just hide. And it's not enough to just cling to the hope that we have in ourselves and to never speak about who we are and what God says because we're afraid or unqualified or not eager to get into that kind of situation. But what does he say in our text today? Regard the Lord the Christ as holy in your hearts. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that is in you. Now you may say, Pastor, I'm not, I'm not able to do that. I'm not qualified. But you are qualified. Let me tell you why. Preaching the gospel, sharing Jesus, is not about you. No matter how long a pastor has been in school, for four years, eight years, or twelve years, I spent a lot of time in school studying the Bible, but that is not what qualifies me to speak about God and what He has done. There are many people who have spent years studying the Bible, but they are not qualified to speak about who God is and what He has done. <coughs> what qualifies you and me to speak and to stand in the place of Jesus and share what He has done and tell people about the glorious salvation that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross for all those, all sinners, who believe and trust in Him is this. Your faith in God. Now that's not to your credit either. Because where does faith come from? Faith comes from the Lord. From the Holy Spirit who God has poured out on you, probably for many of you first, at your baptism. Just as God said, this baptism now saves you also. How? Not the removal of dirt on your body, but the removal of your sin so that you can have a good conscience before God. God has washed you through the waters of baptism. It's not ordinary water. It's connected with God's Word where He forgives your sins, gives you new life, gives you the Holy Spirit so that you have faith. It began in you and that through the preaching and the teaching and the studying that you have done of God's Word has been built up, that your faith has become wonderful by God's power, so that you now know why Jesus matters. Jesus isn't just a fact to you. He's not just a person that lived 200, 2,000 years ago who did good things. Jesus is a man who died for you individually who loves you personally and calls to you to trust Him each and every day. The reason you are qualified to answer is exactly what He said. You are prepared not to give a great dialogue to fight and, and to, 
to have these tough intellectual battles, but to give a reason for the hope that you have. You are here today because God has placed faith in your heart that He has told you to come here to hear the words of a living God, not of a human's opinion. To hear about a Savior who has died for you and because you need that. Because God has taught you by faith to see yourself as a terrible sinner who makes mistakes every day. That's not the fault of anyone else but you. And for that reason, you desperately need Jesus, that is what qualifies you. It's because you know, because of the power of the Spirit, that Jesus is your Savior. It doesn't take a deep theologian, it doesn't take a pastor to give that answer. It takes you loving Jesus for all that He has done for you. You can give a reason for the hope that you have. Now you may say, I'm not prepared though. I might be able to give it, but I'm not. I'm never a polished speaker, Pastor. I'm not, I don't know what to say. I've, I've really struggled in those situations in the past. And I would say again that you are prepared. Life has prepared you. It's not about your eloquent speeches or your fancy words. It's not about how well you were able to say it or the way you were able to show how good you are. It's not about your words. It's not about how fancy you can be. It's not about how poetic or how perfect you look on the outside. It's about Jesus. You have everything you need with Him. He is not part of the solution. He is all of the solution. When Jesus has saved you, your mistakes, your faulty words, all the more testify, it's not about you. It's not about how good you are. Sometimes that even helps. When you talk to people about your faith, you say, I am a mess. And that's the point. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. You need Jesus. Because we're sinners, we make terrible mistakes, and I don't have perfect words, but God in His Word gives you perfect words. He gives you the perfect life of Jesus. He gives you life everlasting with God, something that we can barely comprehend in this world. I can't give you an example of that, except what God says in His Word. Now maybe people accuse you of being proud. Or arrogant, because you think you have a better way. And God gives you an answer here too. He says, be proud in Christ. How does he tell us to come about giving this answer? He says very clearly, but speak with gentleness and respect, while maintaining a clear conscience, so that those who attack your good way of life in Christ may be put to shame because they slandered you as evildoers. And it says, Indeed, is it better if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil, because Christ also suffered once for sins in our place. What is this point? How do you speak with gentleness and respect? You're not proud in who you are. You're not proud in the way that you said it. You're even not proud or hurt when someone attacks you personally. But you rejoice that you suffer with Christ. You boast in your Savior and what He has done. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of those who believe. Never be ashamed of Jesus. It may be an exclusive message, but it is inclusive to all who are ready to admit that they need help. And Jesus offers his love freely to all those who turn to him. And so finally, one more thing I want you to take away from this. Is to not be afraid, but to be eager. You heard what our text said about those back in the day of Noah. Noah preached for 120 years to people who refused to listen. They saw him building a boat on dry ground and said, you fool. How could you build a boat that big on dry ground? It makes no sense. 
And he said, because the Lord told me a flood is coming. But all those who believe in him and trust in his salvation will be saved. Come into this boat. We too need to be eager. Not afraid. Because of someone's feelings being temporarily hurt. Or us being labeled unloving or unforgiving or whatever it is. But to be eager to speak the truth. Why? Because something like that flood is coming. Whether sooner or later we will all die. And without Christ there is no hope. There is no life. And if we don't die before Jesus comes, He will come to judge the living and the dead. And those on their own will not go to heaven. So right now, today, tell your friends and your neighbors and your enemies about Jesus. Because you love them. Because without Christ, they're going to hurt a lot, a lot more. God calls us to always be prepared. Not just me, but all of us. And I am afraid, and I know you get afraid, for the tension that comes, for the, the obstinate attitude that we face. We don't want to be perceived as arrogant or, talk, or make ourselves seem as these prideful people. And so you and I need to rely on Jesus to always point to Him, to be ready to admit our faults, if that helps and serves the beautiful purpose of helping people see how beautiful the reason you have for loving Jesus, that hope, is. Because He has saved you. Not because of who you are, but because of who He is. So today, I want you to go in confidence and excitement when you think about Jesus and the hope that you have, the treasure that He is to you. Share it. Because this is the difference between life and death. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Anyone who wishes to come to the Father must come to Him. You are prepared because you hope in the Lord.